Thank you all for coming today. Thanks to all the speakers, to the organizers, to Sphere. It's pretty impressive. We talk about the problems. We talk about not doing enough, what we need to do. But the first step in taking leadership is coming to an event like this, learning what the issues are, learning new strategies, getting to know each other, and just like our, our Aboriginal saying goes, working together to improve lives, to improve health care. And when we talk with each other, we realize no matter whether we're talking about health care or education or defense, the common element is that we're all human beings. And even if you weren't born in hospital, at some time in your life, you will probably encounter a clinic or a clinical provider or a care provider or a member of your family will. And in a way, healthcare and healthcare innovation and education, sharing with each other and working together to improve healthcare is the most humane thing we can do and collaborative thing we can do to be better, to be better citizens, not only of Australia, but really of the world. And that's what this Sphere Conference is about, and I feel very honored to be part of it. We started by disrupting the landscape, and it was just brilliant how Michael Davis's quartet literally disrupted uh, classical music in a, in a funny and beautiful way. Uh, we also were provoked th to think about the different sides of the coin, the different perspectives, and I really appreciated that Norman brought up the point well, we're awash, we as researchers are awash in money because in many ways, there are members of the public who have that perception. And it's our role as scientists and as academicians and clinicians and politicians to educate ourselves and also to share with the public, to educate the public what the reality is. And the reality is there's always a limitation to resources. That limitation may be money, and that's the reality in the laboratories, also in the clinics. That limitation may be time, and the time for oneself when one's a carer for all of their patients. All of these, all of these things are so important. And we can bring all of these to bear by working together. So there's the limited resources on the one hand, but on the other hand, limited resources, whether it be time or money, is a gift as well. If we had unlimited resources, we would have no need to be innovative. And that's what this session is about. We need to be innovative. We need to harness the greatest resource of our country and our world, and that's the human mind. The human mind's capacity to innovate and to make life better for each other. So I'm just delighted that we have a really wonderful group of speakers today who are coming to talk about this. We'll start with Professor, Professor Anushka Patel from the George Global Health Institute. Although she's local and we're very proud of her and all of her accomplishments as a cardiologist, an innovator, an educator, and a clinician, she is also very much globally engaged. And Anushka is going to talk about right from the trenches of working in the clinics that are under-resourced right through to the laboratory to bringing innovations in healthcare to both the medical students and the medical community as well as to patients. Then we're going to switch gears a little bit and look at the state of things as they are now and going forward. Mr. Sastri Chilakuri from McKinsey Institute in uh, Washington, D.C., he works, he's a scientist and an engineer and a tech guru who works very hard to understand things like the regulatory mechanisms. And we as innovators, as tech innovators, one of the first things we learn if we want to translate a technology is to work right from the get-go. When we get that idea or that concept of a clinical need or a technology to address a clinical need, we learn you must immediately involve those who will reimburse you down the line when you bring your product to the patient. 
And when I was younger, I thought, well, that seems like putting the cart before the horse. But as I became more experienced in the field, I realized how true it is. And Sastri has a very interesting presentation where he's going to talk about the role of big data, the role of technology, and how we can harness both of these to bring more value to patients. And value to patients, the value proposition here is no, no features without benefits, meaning if you can't increase access or decrease the cost of healthcare, then you're not bringing benefits and your technology, no matter how cute it is, will not have a positive impact or won't have the maximal impact it could have. Finally, when we think about how can we create a culture that nourishes and cultivates innovation, and not just the creation of ideas and inventions, but also bringing of those to the patients. How do we do that? Ms. Sue Van, who's CEO of the Coulter Foundation, has been doing that in North America, and her, her foundation's methods have now been adopted globally by agencies such as Welcome Borough uh, to, to do just that. And just to set the stage for Sue's talk, as the third talk in the row here, uh, when, when she started the Coulter Translational Research Program that she'll talk about today, uh, biomedical engineering in the USA, they had great infrastructure from the Whitaker Program. They had a, really a, a good base of, of academics and applied researchers. But the academics and the applied researchers really didn't think the same way. And in academia, applied research was considered almost a dirty term. And she led a cultural change where we realized that really by bringing our science to the patient, by, by coming up with the new products for the future and improving life for, for each other through healthcare, that that was the greatest gift that we could give as academics. That was the greatest outcome for our research. And as she'll note, the, uh, the academicians who have embraced this program and have, who have become true innovators and entrepreneurs in this space have now also, they haven't left their basic science, they've become even better basic scientists. And finally, before I don't want to take too much time from the speakers, I think in addition to, to adapting our culture and, and cultivating deeply embedded systems such as the culture translational system into the way we do our, our business. It's essentially a good industry business standard. We also really need to think about diversity and embracing the diversity of disciplines, the diversity in gender, diversity in uh, family histories and cultures and nationalities. And uh, we know that coming up with the, the best solutions and the most creative solutions is easiest when we have as many bright minds at the table with many, as many perspectives as possible. So with that, I invite you to enjoy the innovation and healthcare session, and I very much look forward to hearing our speakers. Thank you. <laughs>